<laughs> Man, you have very unique urine. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Your Brain on Hops. A uh, pretty exciting episode we have for you today. We have three segments that we're going to focus on. We're going to talk about a new brewery that opened up in Buffalo, New York. We're going to talk about some locale beers, specifically craft options. And uh, we're even going to try a macro beer that none of us have Ugh. had before. That's very low calorie. I and am so excited. Oh, it's Cue the be... Darth Vader intro. <laughs> the Imperial Mars theme. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so weird. Um, and then third, we're going to sample uh, some home brews that Alex brought. So that's pretty exciting. Those are, uh, those are usually pretty solid, except that one time, which we won't talk about. That's not. <laughs> Did he bring pineapple pizza and it threw off the flavor? Yeah, that's right. Everyone, Alex likes pineapple pizza. We're sorry to admit. Yes. It's not just pineapple pizza, though. It's Hawaiian pizza. It's got to have the ham. I'll just throw pineapple on a fucking pizza and... That's not that's not Hawaiian. If you the put a flower on a turd, it. it's still a turd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, you're not saving your pizza. I love them. See, I've actually wanted to do a Hawaiian pizza beer. Should we hold our smoked, bomb or let it out? It would be a slightly smoked <laughs> let it build. pineapple. To get the pineapple, the smoke would be more of like the ham. Mm-hmm. See, a smoked pineapple beer I'm okay with. All right. Anyways, so Froth. I have had the pleasure of going there not once but twice. I was there when they first opened. It was the day of Buffalo on Tap, and we brought friends from Cleveland uh, to try some of their beers, and we got a crowler to take home of the DiMaggio IPA, which was fantastic, which is rare for me because whenever I go to a brewery opening, I always go, huh, they're trying. That's cute. It's a new place. This was not that case. I tried DiMaggio and I went, wow, they're not just trying. This is a really tasty IPA that I would drink regularly if it were canned. Hint, hint. Um, but in comparison, I remember the first time I went to Resurgence, I went, oh, cute. They try to throw in buffalo flavors with Loganberry Wit and the Sponge Candy Stout. And none of those, to me, tasted like the aforementioned flavors or the names at all. Um, but it was a cool location and I thought it was a nice effort. Um, whereas with Froth, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting, um, one of the heads of the place, Jesse, who was very kind and, uh, told me about the beers and about the place. And, uh, he's interested in coming on the show with us and doing an interview with us, which, which should be in a future episode if we can manage to set that up. Um, so cheers to him. Uh, and he recommended as well as many, the cinnamon toasted stout which comes in at 10%, so it's a heavy start for us compared to usual. But what do we think, guys? So I'm a huge cinnamon fan, and uh, they don't hide the cinnamon in mm-hmm. this beer. So that after that initial sip, and, and this beer is, is super dark, almost uh, it's kind of thicker, um, you know, kind of what you want from this kind of, uh, of dark stout beer. Uh, but the cinnamon it hit me right up front. And especially, so this was the first uh, beer of the day. I wasn't drinking anything before the show, so palate was pretty clean. And then, bam, cinnamon, uh, and now uh, it's right ruined. with the stout. And now it's ruined for everything else we're going to drink today. <laughs> I say we, uh, we drink that light beer next. <laughs> <laughs> right. We won't taste it as much if we have it after this. What do you think, Alex? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot of cinnamon. I think it actually takes away from the beer a little bit, though. Hmm. It's a little too bitter, in my opinion. But I like the overall flavor profile. It just finishes a little too bitter. I can see that. I Personally, I skew that way, especially with cinnamon and bitterness in a stout. So for me, that works out. But yeah, it, it definitely is present, and it can take away from uh, some other characteristics of stouts that are kind of hidden because it's so powerful. I like it because, as to jump off of one of our previous podcast um, episodes, the breakfast theme of the... Uh, the pop tart beers that we were drinking from decadent ales and then to go into this cinnamon toast because that is one of my favorite breakfast cereals despite the fact that i realize there's nothing about your balanced breakfast that's in that cereal it's all sugar uh but and i'm not getting a lot of sugar or sweetness from this beer i am getting as uh alex and chris post mentioned the cinnamon but i get a little bit of toasty character in the malt i think it's definitely there and i really like the taste of this beer I do too. Uh, I think the biggest question I would have about it, though, is why an imperial stout? Hmm. Stout, uh, when I think cinnamon toast, cinnamon toast crunch cereal, mm-hmm. I don't think chocolate or 
I don't. I mean, I guess I think coffee a little bit, mm-hmm. just because it might have a cup of coffee on the side. But I don't. know. I just think it's an interesting choice to go with an imperial stout. Mm-hmm. They could have started with the beer. So we want to brew an imperial stout, and uh, what can we do different? That's just you know instead of your typical kind of blend of chocolate coffee flavors and smoke flavors, what else can we do? And then got to cinnamon or maybe the cinnamon uh, toast after that. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, it, only because from that perspective, I think it makes more sense than, yeah, I don't know if I'd go Imperial Stout if I'm starting with, I want to make something that tastes like that kind of breakfast or that cinnamon toast. Yeah. I, I, okay. Yeah. Thinking of it that way, I can definitely see that then, that they might have had a killer Imperial Stout that they wanted to do already. And they're like, mm-hmm. how can we do this differently? Throw cinnamon to- and some toastier malt and, oh, hey, cinnamon toasted. Mm-hmm. It's just cinnamon toasted, right? Yes. There's no crunch. Okay. <laughs> it is a lot of cinnamon, though. I compare it a lot to the cinnamon roll from Southern Tier, which I liked when I had it at the brewery, but once I had it out of the bottle, I hated it. <laughs> it was so much cinnamon coming out of the nose of that bottle, and I was working with my dad on my bookshelf that I'm actually building from ha- scratch, which is hard for me because I'm not that kind of inclined person. But I thought, well, if I'm working on something in a wood shop, I need a beer, despite the fact that I'm working with heavy machinery. But, um, which they tell you, but you're working. It. Yes. <laughs> and, so um, a beer. <laughs> yeah. So I opened that bottle and then I, I just, you could see it hit you right in the face with a huge cinnamon. Fl- Have you guys had that one yet? Nope. I, I don't know what they did in the, but maybe it was in the bottling or maybe the second, what? It, it was a later batch. Cause I had it when it was like first. What, what beer are you talking about? Cinnamon roll from Southern tier. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I want to have it now though. That's mm. I, I'm such a big fan. Like. I like this if, if there's so much cinnamon that the beer is almost bad because of it. Mm-hmm. Like, I want enough cinnamon. If it's going to be a cinnamon beer, I want enough cinnamon that it's definitely going to come in last place in a beer competition. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be like, why do they put in this much cinnamon? <laughs> that, that's what I want. It's the cinnamon challenge do of cinnamon beer. put cinnamon in your coffee? So I started making a coffee smoothie recently, mm. huh. which sounds weird, but it's uh, uh, coffee, almond milk, a banana, um... Some Greek yogurt, and then, yeah, cin- probably more cinnamon than I should. It, the recipe called for a dash. I put in more. Yeah. Blend it all together, and it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Cinnamon but, is but insanely uh, good for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I put it on my Excellent. bagels. Greek some yogurt, butter, huh? Some cinnamon. And almond milk. <laughs> Three ingredients in the banana. Same thing I put in my smoothie every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mine has berries, though. Throw, throw in some coffee. Huh. But I do have to say, the location itself is on Military Road. If you haven't been there yet, I suggest getting there. Um, they are getting popular. I was there and I filled up this crawler on St. Patty's Day this past Sunday. So if you're listening next, whenever this comes out, it was St. Patty's Day when I got it filled. Um, and it was pretty crowded or starting to get crowded there. There, A lot of different stuff was coming out. I know uh, as per request, I picked up some crawlers of the Lemon Raspberry Sorbet IPA Sour or sour IPA rather, and I tasted that, and that was really, really good. It's got that sour taste, a bit of that IPA kick to it. It's fruity, so I really like that. I don't particularly like lemon flavor in beer, but this one, it didn't take away from it for me. I really liked it. Their purple OG beer is also really good. It's got a little bit of texture to it. I, I enjoyed that a lot. So they just, every time, the two times I've been there, it's just been great offerings from a brand new brewery. What kind of beer is the that you said purple OG? Uh, I, I can't I, I can't even match that name to a to a beer style. I'm trying to remember, it's it's fruity. It's it is a triple fruited boysenberry sour. Triple fruited boysenberry sour. All right, is boysenberry an actual berry, or isn't it just a mixture of berries? Is it the Prius of berries? Is it a hybrid? They do that. Ha <laughs> ha, but I'm ch- <laughs> The boysenberry is a cross among the European raspberry, the European blackberry, the American dewberry, and a loganberry. It's like the NATO of berries. <laughs> <laughs> Only still relevant and should still be around. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a bit oh, political for me. He went there. Yeah. Back to the beers. Whoops. But boysenberry, <laughs> there's your fun fact for the episode. Yes. <laughs> Four we promised you berries. one. Um, they also have food. Good selection of food there. Good menu. That they have the quintessential uh, brewery pretzel, hot pretzel you can get with the dips. Gotta love those. Oh yeah. Uh, so, did you have a favorite beer from Froth so far? Now that you've had quite a few. 
Um, Cinnamon Toasted is up there, the Lemon Raspberry, but DiMaggio, that very first release they had. Um, I plan on asking Jesse when we, we have him on the inter, or on the air uh, if they are going to bring back any beers, and I will. I'm not too too proud to get on a, you know both knees and beg him to bring back DiMaggio because that was really really good. But he will. I hope so. <laughs> Don't worry, listeners. We will have photos of that <laughs> on our Instagram account <laughs> if it happens. Oh God. Oh, but it's good. It's good stuff. Well, that's encouraging. That's uh, I haven't had a chance to get out to froth yet, so the, I, I'm really liking this beer. And uh, I'm maybe a long the... walk from Chris's work. <laughs> 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 not, um, not all the breweries can be walking distance. They're on Military Road, um, which they actually were going to be, and this would have been dangerous. They had a location picked out that was closer to Hurdle. I think it would have even been on Hurdle or Tacoma, and um, it's right down the street from me. So when I heard the announcement originally that they were going to be down there, I said, this could be really bad because self-control and craft beer are kind of hard to go hand in hand. So having it right down the road would have been rough. But now I do have to drive to get there, but it's still conveniently close enough that if I'm on my way home from work, I can stop in and grab a crawler and make my wife very happy because she likes their beer too. Perfect. And it is, I mean, like other breweries, it's kid friendly. There's nothing kids like centered about the place, but you can, I saw people there with toddlers or kids running around. We all know, we all know how much you like to bring your kid to the bar. I do. He's a good (laughs) bar buddy. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. (laughs) He has a higher on tap list than uh, some of my friends. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Kids don't drink. Well, he only checked into the milk and the juice and... (laughs) He is partial to the juice. Cheers to froth. Yeah, raise a glass. All right, so next up, well, actually, uh, first for all our our listeners out there, I want to do a quick intermission. Um, In case you haven't noticed, uh, Dan isn't with us today. Dan. So uh, we were all meeting to uh, to get together to talk uh, a few hours ago, earlier before this podcast. And um, we were meeting up outside my house, and uh, on this this helicopter came down out of nowhere and uh it was shocking because i mean this is this is just outside buffalo um but anyway helicopter comes down this dude in a suit runs out i was like dan we need your help dan just books it for the helicopter and they take off it was the craziest shit i've ever seen no labels on the helicopter we have no idea who it was for completely black i i don't know it was it was weird but in any case uh, Dan's not with us this episode because because that happened. So um, he will be so, missed. Yeah, he'll be he'll be missed. Best of uh, luck. Godspeed. Well, I I, I hope your um, mission is successful. Yeah. Well, um, whatever that. I hope it's also legal. Um, so uh, knowing him, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that happened. Um, but our next segment here. So uh, so we're gonna be talking about low calorie beers. Uh, this is a thing that's becoming more popular in the brewing community, and it's one of the uh, items that actually affects macrobrewers and microbrewers. You see more craft breweries coming out with some low-calorie options. Um, I mean, we're going to have one here today, but also uh, I just read an article that uh, Dogfish Head is actually coming out with a low-calorie option. Hmm. I think it'll be released in uh, April or May sometime soon. So uh, that'll be interesting. But yeah, craft brewers are doing it. And then, of course, macro brewers are doing it as well. You have a lot of different uh, options there. And uh, and that's that we'll be sampling one of those as well. So that'll be pretty fun. <laughs> Tim's really looking forward to it. <laughs> fun is a word for it. <laughs> It'd be uh, like eating pineapple on pizza. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep bringing it back Well said, up. Tim. Well said. <laughs> so the first beer we have is Lagunitas Daytime IPA. This beer is uh, 4% ABV, and it's, like I said, an IPA, and it's only 98 calories, so clocking in at under 100 calories per 12-ounce can, which is pretty impressive for a craft beer. It's interesting. It's got a unique taste to it. It definitely has that, like, it tastes like the shadow of a heavier IPA. Like, they took an IPA and they just said, you know what, kid, we're going to lighten you up, and he hit the gym and came out with... Daytime IPA. <laughs> that's that's a good metaphor too. <laughs> I, I could visualize that in my mind. Um, so with this beer, um, I wonder if hops actually add calories because it doesn't taste overly hopped for an IPA. Like it doesn't. It doesn't. Like there's there's some flavor there. There's a little bit of bitterness, but like I don't know. It doesn't scream IPA to me. See, that's interesting because I 
I, I mean, I, I don't get strong IPA at all, but I do get IPA. And I, I did have, uh, I was sipping on it a little bit um, earlier after that last stout, and I have noticed a difference between those first few sips, which honestly were a little bit watery, and then now, um, which uh, I am getting more of the hot profile and more of the flavors come through. So I'm curious how much of it was just us uh, uh, really fucking up the palates going into a lighter IPA, <laughs> or well, lighter beer in general. Um, or, yeah, or from not. an imperial stout. From an imperial, from a cinnamon flavored, <laughs> cinnamon bombarded imperial stout. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it says on the can, uh, at 4% ABV and only 96 calories, daytime IPA represents everything we know about making hop-forward beer expressed in a Soto voice. Call us, and they include their number. Cheers. <laughs> Which is interesting. So they, they, Yeah, they really want you to call them and let them know what you think of their I light. Th- I think we should call them on the show right now. <laughs> on the air. <laughs> Who answers at, well, what time is it there? In Cal- they're in California, right? Three hours. So, yeah. 518, uh, there might be someone still around. There probably is. It's 98 calories. I mean, it's they're definitely trying to appeal to that market because one of the big criticisms you get from people that aren't craft beer people is, well, all that beer you drink is so heavy and so high in calories, it's just not even, I need something lighter. And they're clearly trying to appeal to that demographic. And I think something like this could lead the way. Um, I know Southern Tier just released their Swipe Light. I have not tried that yet, but that's a, a similar effort, I think, on Southern Tier's part to make a lighter drinking uh, craft beer. I'm not sure what I think about that movement altogether. I kind of like my beer nice and heavy. but So you know. it, it depends what you're drinking while you're doing. So, for example, if you're doing some manual labor, if you're working, um, having a lighter beer that's not going to muddle your head too much, you can kind of go through a couple of them. Uh, I mean, I've done that before, and and that's 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 pretty nice. I don't know if I would uh, finish off a crowler of of a cinnamon imperial stout if I was putting together a book cabinet. Hey, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to the Tim in the hospital photos while we'll we're posting on our Instagram account in the coming weeks. Uh, so this beer as well, uh, recently. So I was introduced by the, to this beer a month or two ago at Belly Who in Buffalo, which is a uh, bar we've mentioned a lot. They have a, usually have a pretty good lineup of beer. Uh, they also have a good lineup of cans in the coolers that you can grab. And they did have all-day IPA from uh, Founders for a while, and they started carrying this Lagunitas Daytime IPA. So I was like, yeah, I'll grab one of those uh, with lunch. And sure enough, I, I did enjoy it a lot uh, during lunchtime. So uh, so having that experience, and then once, uh, once some of the Imperial Stout, Stout started to wash down, um, th- th- this is a beer that I'm fond of. It definitely is lighter and it, I mean, it's crystal clear. It, it almost looks like a Pilsner if yeah. you were just to look at it, mm-hmm. not necessarily an IPA. So it definitely is on the lighter side, but, uh, but come summertime, I think this will be really nice. Or at least not the, uh, the IPAs we think of these days that are so hazy you can't see through. <laughs> That's an excellent point. This looks like an IPA from 1998. <laughs> we, we went from the lake effect, hard to see through hazy IPAs to the light, very drizzle of a rain IPA in this one. Okay, that metaphor is a bit of a stretch. Sorry, guys. No, I liked it. Drizzle <laughs> of a rain. That's uh, I painted a nice photo. I get no drizzle. <laughs> I'll show you a drizzle. Alex is this is sunshine to me. Dry. <laughs> a sip of sunshine? No. <laughs> This double d- double the background. calories, and I think we might be around some <laughs> sunshine. That's right, yeah. You know, when it comes to um, these lighter beers, um, I do really like lighter-bodied beers. Calories are not a thing I ever care about, though, when it comes to my beer. No. I really don't care. It really all comes down to, is for the style, is it good? Like, is the body right for the style? Is it too thin? Is it too heavy? But, I mean... When it really comes down to it, whatever, like you said, you know, depending on when you're drinking it. But calories is never a thing I'm really ever concerned about. So when you're drinking a beer, it's more just like generalized. I mean, like you're not going to, you know, pound back a bunch of Imperial Stouts every day. Oh, God, Um, no. That'd be, uh... <laughs> well, it, it also comes down to, you know, what am I doing? Am I just sitting on the couch watching yeah. TV or am I working on something? You know, it all depends on what I'm doing for the type of beer I'm drinking. 
I'm curious because because uh, you mentioned the calories. If you're if you do have either a big night or you're planning on having a big night, having a bunch of beers, you know, imperial beers, uh, are you gonna fit in like an extra workout somewhere or do something regarding that? So on the whole calorie theme, or not really, just that that kind of thing happens. I'll try, but <laughs> if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. <laughs> I that's enjoy the, beer more than I enjoy working out, so <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the beer I want. Nice. I think it comes down to also why you're drinking. Because a lot of people, especially in American culture, there's this tendency to drink to get drunk. Which, if that's your thing, kudos to you. Put your keys down. But for the rest, for myself, I drink for, because it tastes good. Like, if I have the choice between Hawaiian Punch and a and a Bud, I'm drinking Hawaiian Punch all day. Bud is crap. Hawaiian Punch is delicious. Why do I choose craft beer? It's because it's something that tastes good. Like, I don't stick with craft beers that don't taste good. Like, I don't know, any number of ones that I've had over the years that stick out is like, that really wasn't a good craft beer. I'm not going to go back to it. KC Pill stands out from Boulevard. I love Boulevard beer. I tried everything they had at the brewery. That was one of them that I went... I would never drink this again because although it's, it was good for a light Pilsner, they were clearly trying to appeal to people that really like that lighter Pilsner-y taste that you get from a Bud, but with a better taste to it, which is fine, but it's not for me. I drink because I enjoy the taste of a heavy, dark, high-calorie IPA. That's what I go for. It's good. You like the high-calorie. Yes. Just like he likes the sugary fruit punch. Yes. Is it only because you have a kid in the house? <laughs> or do you actually buy it? No, I actually have been buying Hawaiian punches since I was in college. Buy the jug. It's fantastic. Those massive plastic ones? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Absolutely. I can attest to that. I, just, I saw them in those college homes. <laughs> That's true. I'm picturing yeah. your wife coming home, and you're just on the couch, like half-dressed, empty jug of fruit punch next to you. Your mouth is stained red. <laughs> Marty Morphin Power Rangers on the TV because my son is into it now. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's why. She's like, <laughs> I'm flashing right back to, you know, hey, he loves the Pink Ranger, and I can't blame him. <laughs> Don't we all? Mm-hmm. Truth. And you I'm know at- she's like 48? Well, not in the show. <laughs> no, I know that, but I've seen her recently in pictures. She looks fantastic, and I'm like, wow. My Laura looked it up how old she was, and I'm like, you shut your mouth. It doesn't matter how old she is. She's still a Pink Ranger, but, man. Yeah, the, the power coins give you a touch of longevity. <laughs> that's right. So, moving on to the uh, the next one, let's uh, let's crack open this macro brew. All right, we put this hey, off long enough, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, it. and I'm not pouring this in the glass; I'm drinking it right out of the bottle. Oh yeah, <laughs> Chris spared no expense. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best. He for you bought guys. a whole twelve pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was probably still cheaper than the crawler I bought. <laughs> yeah, it was probably half the price. I think it was eleven dollars. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> it was almost half the price. <laughs> All right, we put this off long enough. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Here we go. I have never once dreaded drinking a beer on this show before. Today's the day. It, yeah. So well, we are drinking a Select 55 from Budweiser. What makes oh, it, it select? smells delicious. Premium light beer. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, cheers, Jets. All right, cheers. cheers. I guess. Are we sure this is beer? Kind of tastes like water. Like, I'm pretty sure when I pee, it tastes better than this. <laughs> Why are you drinking your pee? <laughs> I haven't. Because it's sterile but I can just and I like the taste. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I just... But it's only 55 calories. You don't it, have to work out now. Th- that's true. I wasn't planning on it to begin bro. with. But yeah, bro. <laughs> bros. You think even bros drink Budweiser Select 55? Like, Probably. I don't know if I've ever seen someone drink this. Like, yeah, but do you hang out with the people that would drink this? That, that's true, I do not. Or I, I should say, drink this in public. We should go down to some college no. town and find our old houses down in Fredonia and just walk in with this and watch how many people want one. I think health-conscious people who work out all the time would drink something like this. I don't think bros would because it's only it says on the back, alcohol content not more than 3.2%. Those bros want their alcohol. And now that's we true. figured out by weight and what that is in actual ABV, but we know... Those bros are not doing that math. No offense to bros <laughs> everywhere. No, just kidding. Total Damn. offense. And Tim all is just bros. going off on bros. <laughs> the hell, bro. 
<laughs> <laughs> it does have 1.9 grams protein, which the Oof. bros would like. Yeah. Who needs a protein shake when you got Budweiser Select 55? And less than a gram of fat. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. It'll go great with that not six-pack I have. Can anyone else literally not taste this? No. There's nothing to it's, taste. Yeah, there's really not much to it. It's carbonation. That would take about 17, 18 before you got close to a buzz. So, Maybe. So I don't want to be hated for this comment. Oh, no. But, and I'm not hating it for the sole reason Blimey. that it reminds me of a carbonated water, which I do enjoy. And that has a light flavor. It's basically just water that's been carbonated with a very light like flavor. I mean, it's it's very straightforward, and it's you're not it's not like drinking juice like Tim. Um, this <laughs> Hawaiian me- punch is much better than this. Let's just <laughs> say that. that are better. That, this reminds <laughs> me more of like a carbonated water that was flavored like beer, not actual beer. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you were at Wegmans and you're like, all right, I got lime carbonated water, I got cherry. Oh, here's a beer one. So let this, me grab this Dasani one. Dasani carbonated water. Does uh does anyone get any taste. any lemon out of it though? That would I'm actually mean, starting to pick up a little bit of lemon. That would mean I would have to taste flavor in I'm this. not, but it's curious you said that because when I was at the store, which is a whole thing I'll get into in a moment, the uh the Budweiser also had some other le- or uh uh, like lime and, and lemon flavor, like those kinds of flavored light beers as well. And, and not, not like Bud Light lime or anything, but like this kind, like low calorie, special created that had those kinds of flavors. So I'm curious if uh, they had some cross contamination going on. Oh, and to add to everything else, there is a phone number we could call for them <laughs> to 1 800 dial Bud to remind them of how much we don't love this beer. You are the Pineapple and ham pizza of beer. <laughs> Thank you for finally well getting said. it right. Well <laughs> I threw the ham in there. The ham is mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's some shark fins swimming around the uh, the upper part of Where? the bottle here. I, I yes, sir. What? Uh, and that that seems like there would be some kind of lime or tropical flavors as well. What? I don't have oh, shark fins. Yeah. I have Budweiser emblems oh, yeah. or Anheuser Busch logos. So do I. Oh, is it a land shark bottle? Do you have? That's what I'm thinking. That's too. what it is. It, it does kind of, like, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, Landshark? use the same bottle. Is Landshark is it, owned Land by Shark Is owned yeah, by them? It yeah. is. <laughs> Reduce, reuse, recycle, kids. Oh, well, there yeah. you go. Cheers it's a clear to bottle. Just throw the label on it. <laughs> Isn't that what Coors and Keystone are? Just a different label and a dented can. I'm Pretty surprised much. it's not skunky being in a clear bottle. Oh, but it is. I guess there's not enough hops in it. To it is really freshest get before the 16th of May, 2019. So this is moderately fresh beer. It doesn't say it when says it was bottled. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it gives an expiration date instead. It's not a best buy from um, Stone Brewing. It is a please yeah. dump this if it's after this it's, date. It, it, it's not an enjoy buy because no. they don't want to be presumptuous. Yeah. <laughs> they know full well you're probably not going to enjoy, enjoy it. it. No. But it is freshest before. So that's true. <laughs> yeah, so if this has a best before date, that's May 2019. Let's see. There's a chance that this was brewed as far back as April or May 2018. Because sometimes for these macro brews, sometimes they're Fresh buy is upwards of six months or even a year from uh, brewing or or bottle date. Yeah, that's not that's not right. And you could have told me it was brewed back in two thousand nine, and I would have believed you. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it was brewed a little more recently than that, just because I'm not getting skunk out of it. And even with just a minimal amount of hops, if any sunlight penetrates the the glass, which it would in a clear bottle you would start getting a skunky flavor. Think about Corona. That's what you're that's what you that's the main flavor of Corona is skunk. <laughs> I could uh I could pop one up on the, the aging shelf. We could have it on an episode over the summer. Shut up, Chris. After the uh, uh, I like that idea do but, it. No, come on. <laughs> it's well, only one bottle split between all of us, so uh, it's good. Yeah. It's fine. It's not a whole bottle. <laughs> Well, uh, we want to see uh, uh, if it does get skunky or if it tastes exactly the same. You should keep past, it in direct sunlight until 
that moment. <laughs> <laughs> just put one in your front window. That's right, yeah. Just put one in your front window and, and keep one extra in fun. your, uh, or the rest of the case in your fridge for, you know. Turn it slightly every day so that each part of the bottle gets a different <laughs> amount of sunlight. I do have a lot. I could exp- I could do all these experiments. <laughs> oh, that's why you they give sure you you're not going to drink these in your spare time? You're going to come home from work and crack a bottle of Bud 55? Uh, let's say. Select? I'll, I'll have some bros over. <laughs> <laughs> And they'll look at you and be like, what the fuck is this 3.2%? <laughs> Where's the real Miller High Life? I'll be like, guys, <laughs> guys, <laughs> this is just the mixer. No, no, they, they, go want with the, the they want the Bud Platinum. That's oh God. <laughs> I remember trying one of those when it first came out. I think they did have, but wait, that's still out, right? I think they had a Bud Platinum. Up Probably. I, I was rather, and yeah, so speaking <clears> of being at the store, there, there was a lot of Bud options. I mentioned they had the, the lime or lemon one. There's Bud, Bud Platinum, Light and Norma, of course, and a few other ones, <clears throat> which I was surprised about. But I actually went up to the guy, and because uh, I only saw the 12 pack, and I was like, "So does this?" Uh, I said, "I'm looking for a low calorie beer." Uh, for, and I mentioned the podcast. Uh, I don't know if a listener or not, but um, yeah, <laughs> I say that because it was it was almost like a character from the Clerks movie. He was very <laughs> disinterested in his job and beer in general. <laughs> um, but I asked him, I'm like, "Do you do these come in any uh, smaller packs? I don't need 12 <laughs> bottles of uh, uh, Bud Select 55." And uh, he's just like, no, no, not really. That's pretty much what Budweiser sends out is what they send out. So, so there were six packs, smaller packs of some other stuff. But, uh, but no, I can only pick up a twelve pack of this. And I felt so weird being in that section. I, I, I like, I, I never go to the macro brew section. It's mm. just totally it's out half of place. the size yeah. of the uh, <laughs> the craft beer section, which is unfortunate. But, but yeah, it was it was weird. I uh, I just spent some time looking around to to see uh, what the lay of the land was because I was looking for the lowest calorie option for the uh, the podcast. Which is so ironic because whenever you watch someone go for the that section, they walk up, grab their thirty rack, and leave. Yeah, there isn't oh, a lot yeah. of shopping around in the macro sections of well, beer I think, stores. I think people who drink macro brews are they're they're set on their one beer, and mm-hmm. they're like, "This is all I drink. I don't give a shit. This is yeah. my beer." They're a Coors person. They're a yeah. Bud person. They're a whatever. It's right. It doesn't matter. Super doesn't matter. Boy. They just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry. What was that noise again? I, I threw up a little in the back of my mouth, and all of my mouth. Like Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> sorry. You know, Last I still have I half a beer here that <laughs> might end up on your head. I have to drive home. I don't want to explain to the officer I have Bud 55 all over me. <laughs> oh, please. I should be like, why, why are you wet with something that's clearly just water? <laughs> <laughs> why does it smell like urine in your car? <laughs> officer, I swear. Man, you have very unique urine. <laughs> Gets mentioned a lot. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't intend to bring it up that much. You and you and urine are like Dan in his baths. <laughs> I hope not. Jeez. <laughs> Dan in his baths. Uh, uh, I hope there's a good bath wherever it is that he's on his mission. That's right. Um, I think they have some good baths overseas. So this was a this was a fun experiment with some uh, some macro brews. Uh, we've done it once or twice before on the show, and uh, it's always it's always interesting. So uh, so yeah, uh, moving on, and I'm really excited. Next, we have home brews coming up. Yeah. Woo! All right. So boys and girls, if you haven't noticed yet, we have at this point by the time you're listening to this started a March Madness Buffalo Brewery bracket. Um, which not apart from being a mouthful, uh, takes 30, we took 36 of the craft breweries around the city of Buffalo, um, and the greater area. So like everything from Western New York, say not including Rochester and over, uh, to the West up and, uh, up until that very tip of Ripley, New York out, um, in the Western tier there, um, Western Southern tier. And we put them all against each other. Um, a lot of breweries, I don't, they might not love this idea because it kind of pits them against each other in competition. And a lot of them feel like they're, they're friends and they all just give us really great tasting beer. And that is what we appreciate and love about them too. <clears throat> but in the spirit of March Madness, I thought it'd be cool just to find out what our preferences are. Do you like Southern Tier versus Hamburger? Do you like New York Beer Product versus Thin Man or that kind of thing? I thought it'd be kind of fun to put that together. So right now, uh, on our Facebook and our Instagram, I've been putting up the various matchups based on an arbitrary ranking system I came up with. 
uh, comparing where they're located. So there's a South Towns bracket, a North Towns-ish bracket, the Downtown Buffalo bracket, and then the Way the Hell Out There bracket for all the ones like Southern Tier or Barker Brewing, which I found out closed um, all around the area. And so far, I want to say thank you to the listener base or whoever's following us online with the social networks um, because we are getting a really strong, positive response from this, um, minus the one lovely nameless person that brews for Labatt Brew House. Um, but we welcome trolls. So I'm not going to frown on that person for adding some discourse into our arguments about breweries. Well, we don't necessarily welcome trolls. Dan does. <laughs> and be careful because he's on a secret <laughs> mission right now. That's true. Yeah, when he he comes back, out for you. Watch out. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> um, but it's just been, it's been a good fun. We also, uh, we will not tell you yet. But we have all individually written our predictions, kind of the way you would for actual Mar- March Madness. We have predicted who we think will come out on top in the end. I will save that reveal until we get to our actual final four. So based on your votes, we will take the final four and put them uh, together in one uh, tipping pint episode. And we will drink our final four and pick our winners and then wait for yours um, in the voting. So I'm, I'm excited to see how this turns out. I've had a lot of excitement about this, and, uh, and some questions come up as well. So, listeners, if you do go and vote, uh, a few of the questions are, is this based on the beer, the location, um, just kind of the general vibe? And the answer is all of above. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, whatever the matchup, whatever you like more, it's a great, you know, if the beer is kind of equal, but there's just this location that you love, then vote for that that one. Uh, really, it's just kind of broadly speaking, which uh, which brewery would you vote against the other one in the matchup? And uh, another thing that's come out of this is uh, um, I got a lot of excitement about just, I mean, the fact that we had 36 breweries in the Buffalo and general yeah. Western New York area to uh, to put into this, um, just kind of a celebration of Buffalo breweries and Buffalo brewing and everything that's uh, that that's offered so far. So, um, so, so far, so good. Uh, it's gotten some, uh, some solid, solid attention and, uh, and props to Tim for the write-ups, uh, those write-ups in the posts, <laughs> honestly, if, uh, you know, go and vote, but also make sure you read the write-ups because, uh, <laughs> A lot of those are breweries I haven't actually been to yet. I'm like, damn, I got to get there. This brewery sounds pretty solid. Appreciate that. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. And it does – I did uh, talk to a colleague of mine at work, so shout out to Ben. He does listen. Um, who thought we may be doing ourselves a disservice in this bracket because, as Chris mentioned, we haven't been to all of these. So a true Buffalo Brewery bracket on a Buffalo podcast would have us go to all of the breweries – and drink all of their beer. And then we could properly address the subject. Which, that would... I don't know about the... I can't speak for the rest of you. That would really hurt my budget. Um, and, and my liver. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, but I would love to. And for any of the breweries I haven't been to, which I, I'll mention a couple, Live Edge, uh, Eli Fish. Um, I still haven't actually physically been to Sato Brewing yet. So there's there's a few um, that I will, I will definitely get to. So that's another thing. This is this competition has brought out is me noticing, huh? I can't really justify my vote, but I do like one over the other because I've been there. But I want to go check out and actually sit in, um, you know, Brickyard Brewing and try their food and their beer. So I will definitely be visiting many of these places. Hopefully in the near future. Challenge accepted. Your brain on hops, summer 2019. <laughs> Here comes Ben. You're coming too. He's paying. I heard he said he was buying. So yeah, I heard my liver screaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we did the low cal beer tonight, so we could prep ourselves. <laughs> That's right. For the That's right. Higher calories of the Buffalo. It was breweries. a repre- your, your your taste buds hated it. Your liver liked it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Budweiser, feel free to use that slogan. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been what we called with our comment when we called one eight hundred Bud whatever. So we just cracked open. Um, a brown ale that I brewed. Um, and it's simply that. It's a brown ale. It's a very simple recipe with a little bit of uh, a little bit of chocolate malt in there, a little bit of caramel malt, and it's very light. And there's not much to it. <laughs> he wants our reactions real bad. Way too much flavor. There's, there's more than 3.5% yeah. Yeah. alcohol by weight to <laughs> going on. I'll be honest. The aroma... it's, a, it's strong compared to what we've been drinking. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. Put it next I... to the uh, Imperial Stout. <laughs> when I initially smelled it, I didn't love the initial kick of aroma I got, but, so I was nervous to taste it, but it is very good. 
And now that I taste it and I smell it, it's awesome. I've, I've mentioned it before on the show. I've uh, I've more recently, well, recently-ish, the past six months or so, been getting more into brown ales, which is a style of beer that I've uh, mostly eschewed for the you know not last decade or so. But uh, yeah, I've been getting more into it, and uh, and this is nice. Um, honestly, one thing a brown ale, since it's you know it's not a porter or a stout, so it doesn't have that kind of uh, dark look to it. You can usually see through brown ales; it's a little bit lighter. Um, but I'm I'm not off put by that anymore, which uh, which I have been in the past. So I like that, and there's a smoothness to this, uh, mm-hmm. both in the nose and then uh, kind of in the aftertaste as well. I'm curious, is that do you know where that comes from, or is that a particular character of brown ales? I wouldn't say it's a particular character of brown ales, but <clears throat> um, I think the smoothness from the body is actually coming from uh, wheat that I add to it. Hmm. I'm getting a lot more caramel than I am chocolate in this. Is that by design, or is that just what I'm picking up on? Um, yeah, it's it was. There should be a little more caramel in this one. Hmm. It's good. So why'd you um, go with the uh, brown elder brew? Because the first time you probably, well, actually both of you may have had this, the two of you. I don't know if you were at the pig roast, but that was the debut mm-hmm. of this beer. Oh. Um, and I've, eh, I think this is second or third time since the, since the pig roast. But yeah, this was brewed to pair with all of the different meats that Dan was cooking up. Damn. Now, now I want. That's why yeah, there's a little no. bit more caramel malt in it. And the caramel, the little bit of roast in there to pair well with uh, with grilled meats and hmm. yeah. smoked meats. That, Shout out Snout Barbecue. Hell yeah! That that smoothness I was describing, um, I that could go very well with some uh, some fatty pork or some brisket mm-hmm. you know, with those kind of strong savory flavors. If you're at any event in Western New York and you see Dan sitting by a very large metal object. Eat whatever food he puts in front of you. Yeah, you won't regret it. No. When he comes back from his mission. Unless that metal object is a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> then, I might still trust Dan. I might then still. He's, he's just hanging out. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and uh, this next beer that we got is a pale ale. Um, once again, it is very straightforward, um, which is what I was going for. Just very, very... Simple pale ale, something you can sit down, not really think about too much, but uh, very hot forward. What's the ABV on this? Uh, this one is five point two. That's a it's a, it's a great oh. number for a for a standard pale ale. Mm-hmm. And anything more, and I think you're you're just kind of starting to encroach on IPA territory. Yeah. The uh, the brown ale is four point seven. It's good. I'm getting something in the back. I can't pick up on what the flavor is. Like the initial taste I'm getting is good, and I'm still liking it after. I can't pick up what I'm getting, like some kind of malt character to it or what I'm picking up in the back end. It's hard to describe. A little toasty? Maybe that's what it is. Is that the malt? Victory malt. Victory malt. Uh, Maybe some hmm. floral characteristics in the nose. I'm not. I mean, that's that, that's going very well with, mm-hmm. with kind of the the smoothness and then that that aftertaste that Tim was talking about. Yeah, the uh, the hops using this was uh, Centennial and or not Centennial, uh, Citra and Mosaic. Hmm. Does this guy have a name yet? This one does not. Hmm. Does not, but I'm sure there will be one very soon. This is the very first batch of it. So, out of curiosity, as a home brewer and a prolific home brewer, nonetheless, <laughs> do you name all your beers, or are some just you know IPA batch, batch one, IPA yeah, um, <laughs> forty two? No. That's right. No, they uh, they all usually get a name. Uh, it might not be the first batch, but if it's something I'm trying to brew, it ends up getting a name. Usually after the first batch, the second batch will have a name. And then I'll go back in my brewer book and write the name in on it. Like as simple as, I think I did a pale ale, geez, maybe my second year of home brewing, so like maybe nine, ten years ago at this point. Um, and it was just all Challenger hops. And so I literally called it the Challenger it can, it can be you as really simple as that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> a accurate, accurate name. Hire a namer. 
Um, so as a, you know, as a, as a home brewer, do you usually have something brewing ready, ready to go? Or do you, uh, you know, do you, do you brew for a few months, take a few months off, go on and again? Or? Uh, well, recently, yes. Uh, it's been more of a on off type of thing just cause once I have a couple of cakes of stuff, like I have a lot of beer. Why do I need to brew more? And right now I have four kegs sitting in the kegerator. Don't really need beer. Hmm. I got enough. I wish I had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but this is definitely a recipe I'm going to come back to because I think this one turned out pretty damn good. Well, Alex, thanks for the home brews. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we're, so we're nearing the end of our episode now. Um, before we, we leave off, uh, I want to take a quick moment for parting thoughts. So this week, I wanted to go through uh, like good beers to cook with, or specifically you know, kind of a slow cook, or you know, if you have something in a pan, you're throwing it in there, a slow cooker, crock pot, something like that. Um, kind of good beers you wanna you wanna use for that. And also, if you have a specific example, go for it as well. So uh, Tim, let's start with you. All right, in the spirit of our recent holiday, St. Patty's Day, um, I love a good corned beef. Uh, I mean, who doesn't? Um, and this is the time of year you can actually get it and afford it. Um, so what I usually do is I get a whole bunch of random ingredients, usually bay leaves and even, um, Dijon mustard and all sorts of herbs and things and throw them into a crock pot on top of the meat. And then you pour a beer over it. Now, my mom gave me the recipe. Um, now I am Irish. It's not an old family recipe. I wish it was. Uh, but we do it without cabbage because I grew up hating cabbage. So we do potatoes and carrots instead. And, um, we always, my mom always grabbed whatever my aunt had next door, which was typically a bud or a cores or something. And it always tasted good because beer and meat just does taste good. Um, but when I started, when I moved away and had to start making my own corned beef, I thought, well, I'm going to get craft beer in this. I'm not, I couldn't force myself as Chris so graciously did to provide us with our bud 55 tonight. I couldn't force myself to buy a macro beer and put it in there. I said, I got to try something else. So of course the first one naturally I tried was a Guinness um, with the corned beef, which was very good. But then I got to say the more Irish ales I tried instead of stouts, they turned out even better and better. And then my mom recently this weekend, she was looking for what she was going to make with her crock pot this weekend for St. Patty's. And she did the Conway's Irish ale from Great Lakes. And it was so good. And the way you slow cook it over eight hours with the beer in there, I mean, that meat just pulls apart so easy and just is fantastic. So I can't say enough about how a good Irish ale tastes with corned beef. Slancha. Well, on the topic of the meat just pulling apart, uh, I do a pulled pork in my slow cooker. And uh, I usually use a porter. Uh, If I don't have any of my own on hand, uh, I'll use uh, Great Lakes at Fitzgerald. So, hey, Great Lakes goes well in a slow cooker. It does. Um, But there was a couple of times that I I brewed a uh, bourbon barrel-aged imperial porter, and I put that in there, and wow, (laughs) the bourbon character really gets in there, and it was was delicious. Sounds fantastic. Um, Kind of along that uh, that big note, I'm going to go with – so – a, I'm gonna go with the uh, pot roast, which is uh, you know one of my favorite things to to use a slow cooker for, and uh, the beer that I would use to uh, to put in there and braise it, Molotov cocktail. <laughs> he loves that Molotov. So, uh, nice. so going from Evil Twin, got a uh, Molotov cocktail, got a high ABV, just really gets in. The, oh yeah, you, you can still taste it afterwards. Hmm. So now we actually need a video of you shotgunning one and, and cooking. cooking. Yeah. Why shotgunning while cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it after with the uh, with the slow cooker. <laughs> I feel confident that I can not interfere with what that's doing for four hours <laughs> after shotgunning uh, a Molotov. I have to put that on high. I'm, I'm thinking usually when I start cooking my slow cooking, like I usually start it in the morning before I go to work, which luckily St. Patty's fell on a Sunday. So if you cracked open your beer to pour into your food, you would just be drinking on a day off instead of, you know, I'm going to work later. Uh, It doesn't matter. I got to have a sip of my Guinness before I pour it in the crock pot. But no. Don't lie, Tim. We know you have Guinness in your mug at work. That's not coffee. Uh, I don't even drink coffee, so that's jokes on you. (laughs) Yeah, because he has Guinness in his cup. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing tastes as good as Guinness fresh from the source, though. This summer going to Ireland was pretty fantastic. Actually having a Guinness, 
not only at the brewery, but just in an Irish pub downtown in Dublin. Uh, Guinness is just so good. I have that, always wanted that. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't... Usually I'm the one jealous of you guys and what you get for beer, but that was one moment I will forever remember is holding that in my hand and just my coworkers and my wife looking at me just going, what's up? I'm like, I could cry. <laughs> I'm having a Guinness in the homeland. It's so good. It is better there. Not that it's bad here. It is just better there. Well, I always feel like beer is is always better at the source. Mm-hmm. At the brewery, you get it in a crawler, you can take it home. That's good. When you get end up getting to the point where you have it in a bottle, kind of like uh, when you mentioned the Southern Tier cinnamon, what was it again? Cinnamon roll. Cinnamon roll. You had it at the brewery and you loved it, and then mm-hmm. you had it in a bottle and you're like, what? <laughs> what did you do? And, and on it- that note, <laughs> we are now nearing the end of our show. Uh, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, definitely check out the uh, the brackets that we have going on for March Madness. Please do. Uh, vote, vote, vote. Vote, vote, vote. Your we vote have, matters. We have it on Instagram, uh, at Brain on Hops. Check us out if you don't follow us already. And if you do follow us, thank you. And uh, make sure you're voting in those posts. Then also on Facebook, uh, your Brain on Hops. Go ahead and look us up. And give us a follow. And uh, I, honestly, I, I think, Tim, as the uh, the magistrate of this, they can actually vote twice, right? If they go to Instagram and Facebook? They can. Your vote will count twice. It's not like ghost voting, which we've been told happens. Um, you can actually go on Instagram and Facebook and vote both times. Enough so, with the politics, Tim. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. Um, but so, you, you can vote twice. So go ahead and check us out on Facebook, Instagram. We also have Twitter, at Brandon Hops, same as Instagram. Um, and yeah, you'll see those posts right now. And uh, thank you so much for listening today. Let us know in the comments or uh, if, if you have any anything you'd like us to cover in the future, anything you want to say about the post, any questions, or any of the beers that we talked about today. If you have any more questions about them, definitely feel free to reach out as well. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. 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 Cheers.